Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Your Daily Five, presented by Stock Charts TV. My name is Grayson Rose. I am the Vice President of Operations here at StockCharts.com, as well as the author of Trading for Dummies and Tensile Trading, the 10 Essential Stages of Stock Market Mastery. So good to be with you for another episode. It's been a little while since I've hosted an episode of Your Daily Five, but As I always mention, one of my favorite shows here on Stock Charts TV with a different perspective every day, different charts every day. This is one of the one of the shows that I love to follow uh, at the end of the day when I'm going back through some of the content we've done on Stock Charts TV. So always a thrill when I get to host you. And especially at a time like this, we got so much happening, happening in the market, so much going on, so much to watch on the charts. So I say we get right to it. We got some fun stuff to look at today. So let's go. First up, what I wanted to look at was an interesting chart that I actually shared the other day on Twitter and uh, and got some good feedback on. This is something that um, that I've been using for a long time. Actually, a trick that I learned from uh, from Arthur Hill. If you don't follow Arthur's work, excellent, excellent stuff on stock charts. Um, but you know what we're looking at here is the five day moving average in blue. The blue line uh, is the five day moving average on QQQ and VTI. So we're looking at the Nasdaq 100 up here. I kind of cheated a little bit. I got two charts on the screen. I know we're only supposed to have five, but hey, it's uh, it's all part of one layout in Stock Charts ACP. So you know, I think it's uh, I think it's all game. But anyways, we got uh, the Nasdaq 100 here with the five-day moving average in blue. We've got VTI, which is the Vanguard Total Index, the total U.S. stock market. Again, that five-day moving average in blue. And what we want to look at that relative to is the 200-day moving average. In green, that shaded green area on both charts is the 200 day moving average. So, what we're trying to do with this chart is really kind of filter out some of the noise. When you're looking at a daily chart and you've got individual bars for each day, you do have a lot of noise on that chart. What we can do though is take out some of that noise, uh, sort of cancel out some of that noise, if you will, by looking at a five day moving average or a very, very short term moving average uh, on QQQ here and VTI. We look at that relative to the 200 day again, just to kind of filter out some of the noise. Now I have thrown in the 50 day as well in sort of the faded out red line as well on on both of these charts. But really what I'm going for here is how is the five day moving average sitting relative to the 200 day? And when I look at this chart, the pullback that we've seen here in the NASDAQ, the pullback that we've seen in, in QQQ looks a lot more harmless then when you're looking at those daily bars and you got a lot more noise to it. So this is a view that I like to pull up, uh, again, just kind of to cancel out some of that noise to get a, a little bit more filtered view of what the uh, what the averages are doing. I use this mostly on indexes, not really as much on uh, on individual stocks or even uh, even really ETFs, um, sort of more narrow ETFs. Obviously, we got two ETFs on the screen here, but uh, you know, broad ones, big ones that are, are really more index tracking ETFs. Um, when we look at VTI, by the way, Again, a little bit of a pullback down on the on the five day moving average to its fifty day moving average. Uh, we got those uh, colliding there, uh, but a bounce off. And again, you know we're sitting so far above that uh, that two hundred day. This looks really healthy to me. I mean, when I think about markets, when I think about healthy markets, they move higher in a series of rallies and reactions with higher highs and higher lows. And to me, that's still what we're doing here on QQQ and especially. On VTI, higher highs and higher lows, that is the name of the game when we're in an uptrend. And I would say, looking at this sort of noise canceled 5 versus 200, we are still in an uptrend on both of these indexes. So, something that I've been watching again, that 5 versus 200 view. Now, one of the other things that I've been watching really closely is different market cap levels. So, this is an interesting chart going back six months, again, using ACP actually. Uh, our new interactive advanced charting platform here on Stock Charts, but we're going back six month six months, and we're looking at some of the different market cap levels. So large caps via the S and P 500, that is going to be that blue line down here. We've got mid caps via the S and P 400, that is the green line. Small caps in red, that is the S and P 600, and then we've got a micro cap ETF as well, a micro cap index in orange. We also have VTI, again, that Vanguard total index, the total U.S. stock market in black. So what we're looking at is what's working over the last couple of months and what's not. 
Interestingly, you know, we've heard so much over the last few years about the dominance of large caps, especially the dominance of large cap tech. Uh, but over the last six months, and then even a little bit further back, we've seen a real flip in that um, sort of positioning in the markets. Uh, we're seeing mid caps leading, we're seeing small caps leading mid caps, and we're actually seeing micro caps leading small caps even. And when we look down here at, uh, at large caps, they're actually underperforming the total market, the S&P 500 underperforming the total U.S. stock market, VTI, over the last six months. So interesting to see this uh, this reversal, which actually gets me pretty excited. I love to see the leadership of some of the smaller names. Uh, and we can see that re reflected down here in the bottom three panels as well. So here we have the S&P 400 versus the S&P 500, so mid caps versus large caps. Again, mid caps clearly leading large caps overall. Uh, we have small caps versus large caps clearly leading again, and we have micro caps versus uh, versus large caps clearly leading on that third panel as well. So a lot of strength as we go down into the smaller cap tiers, uh, which actually gets me pretty excited. I, I really like to see that in this uh, this current market environment that we're in. Next up, uh, two of the ratios that I love to watch. Um, we hear a lot of people talking about offense versus defense, and traditionally the way that people track that offense versus defense ratio, again, kind of you know the, the mission there is to, to gauge, is the market favoring offense? Are we a little bit more aggressive, or is the market favoring defense? Are we kind of on the defensive? Uh, are we a little bit more hesitant? Is the, you know, which, which uh, side is the market favoring there, uh, offense versus defense? Um, so we can track that traditionally through the XLY versus XLP ratio, uh, the S&P sector ETFs, consumer discretionary versus consumer staples. Consumer discretionary, traditionally, a much more aggressive sort of offensive sector of the market. Consumer staples, a much more defensive sort of hesitant uh, sector of the market. So when we track those versus each other, consumer discretionary versus consumer staples, we get what, uh, what a lot of people refer to as the offense versus defense ratio. Now, we can see that that has been leading so or, or trending higher, so offense has been outperforming defense overall, but we have seen that start to roll over a little bit. And actually, uh, on this standard ratio that we'd like to look at, uh, XLY versus XLP, we can actually see XLP uh, leading defense, leading offense over the last couple of months, really uh, really in 2021 here, this, this line starting to, to roll over and trend down. Now, the interesting thing, though, is that that ratio is a cap-weighted ratio in the sense that both the ETFs are cap-weighted. So they are going to favor things like, for instance, Amazon in that consumer discretionary. So the knock against this ratio is that it does get pretty disrupted by some of the big, big, big cap names like Amazon, like Home Depot, things like that. So we can actually look at this in another flavor down below uh, with RCD versus RHS. Same exact ratio, same exact concept, consumer discretionary versus uh, consumer staples, but in an equal weight flavor. So we sort of strip out that, uh, that cap weight bias. And when we look at this in the equal weight flavor, we are still seeing a lot of favoring of offense in this market, which I love to see. Again, you combine that with um, sort of favoring those lower uh, cap tiers, the smaller cap tiers uh, with small caps and, uh, and micro caps and mid caps leading large cap names. Uh, this gives me a lot of confidence in this market to see uh, the market overall favoring offense. I love to see that. So an interesting way to sort of track offense versus defense here. This is actually part of a sample layout in ACP. So if you go to Stock Charts ACP, you go over on the left, look for the layouts tab. It looks like a little grid icon there. Uh, you can open that up and we actually have a lot of different sample layouts for you to choose from. So you can get up to 12 charts on the screen in ACP. And we've created a lot of sort of canned layouts for you to play around with. Uh, one of them includes both these ratios. Uh, we call it the offense versus defense um, layout there. And it actually includes two others that I track as well, which is tech versus utilities and then biotech versus healthcare. Uh, so an interesting thing to play around with there. So a couple of charts that I've been watching, um, again, sort of, you know, the five versus 200, giving me a lot of confidence that we're still sitting pretty on that. And this really feels like a, a healthy pullback, has felt like a healthy pullback within a broader uptrend. Uh, we're seeing the smaller cap tiers really favored, and we're also seeing offense versus defense overall continuing to lead uh, offense versus, um, in the offense versus defense ratio, we're seeing offense continue to lead defense. So Good things from a couple of these charts. I do love to see that. Now, 
for fun, I wanted to leave you with a couple of individual names that I've been keeping a close eye on. So every Sunday on Twitter, I put out what I call my 10 I'm stocking list. You can follow me at Grayson Rose on Twitter if you are there. But it's always 10 names that are interesting setups, interesting charts that have caught my eye as I'm going through the market review over the weekend. So this week, I had these 10 names. This is the uh, the latest 10 I'm stocking list. Again, I do this every Sunday on Twitter. So go follow me there. Uh, you can check out that list if you're interested in it. But two names that I wanted to highlight from this week. One is Yeti. I'm loving what I'm seeing out of Yeti. Uh, this actually was originally on my 10 I'm stocking list back when it was making this original breakout. Moved higher, consolidated a little bit, broke out again from that range. And we're seeing kind of a similar pattern here from Yeti as it's consolidating over the last couple of months, but moving up towards the top of that range, down a little bit today, uh, but nothing too concerning there with a, a small move lower. Um, again, moving up towards the top of that consolidation range that we've seen over the last couple of months, continuing to outperform the total market. So here we have Yeti versus VTI. How is this stock doing relative to the total market? I love to see that outperformance, that relative strength uh, as it's continuing to make its way up towards the top of that consolidation range. If we can see a breakout there, I think Yeti is setting up for another run. Uh, you know, again, a, a great trend on this, the rising 200, just beautifully moving higher. Uh, and not too overbought. I mean, RSI looking great, a lot of accumulation in this name, and a strong scooter score over 80 as well. That's our stock chart's technical rank. So a lot to love, I think, on the chart of Yeti. Um, and this one actually hasn't been public for too long, so it's only uh, a couple of years into being public. So it uh, could be setting up for a nice run if we're looking at the weekly chart too. This one actually looks pretty good. Another name that I'm looking at in the technology space, actually, technology has been hit pretty hard, but one that's actually been holding up beautifully is Dynatrace. Uh, again, nice relative strength here, continuing to outperform the market overall. Uh, sort of a similar pattern. We saw a breakout. We saw a retest of that breakout, uh, a bounce, and now it's been consolidating. Dynatrace has been consolidating for the last couple of months. So I love to see that, um, you know, continuing to move higher, continuing to trend nicely up. Moving averages look great. RSI not overbought. Uh, scooter score could be a little stronger. I'd love to see that come up. But first and foremost for me is always going to be price. And this has been consolidating nicely. If we can get a breakout above that consolidation level, um, I think this is going to set up nicely. And again, continued relative strength, holding up well for a tech stock right now. So I'd love to see that. Always interesting. So a couple of names that I am following closely. Again, I do that 10 I'm stocking list every Sunday on Twitter, if you want to follow me on Twitter there. A couple of other ways to keep in touch. Again, I mentioned Twitter at Grayson Rose, but uh, my personal website is stockmarketmastery.com. Uh, I do some uh, some fun things over there, courses, education, that kind of thing, uh, alongside my Tensile Trading co-author, actually, Gaddis Rose. Uh, go pick up a copy of Tensile Trading. That was my first book that we did back in 2016. Uh, still a great book that has a lot of how I trade, how I invest, uh, how I think about the markets, all of that. So Tensile Trading, the 10 Essential Stages of Stock Market Mastery. You can pick that up on Amazon. Or Trading for Dummies. If you want something a little more structural, structural, a little more foundational, pick up a copy of uh, Trading for Dummies. That was my second book. Uh, did that back in 2017. So go find a copy of that as well on Amazon or in the Stock Chart Store. Both of these books are also available in the Stock Chart Store, store.stockcharts.com. You can get there really easily. Finally, I just wanted to mention that uh, my show, In Focus, our product focus show on Stock Charts TV every Friday, 3.30 p.m. Eastern time. We really dig into the site, dive into the features, focus on the product, trying to get you more value out of Stock Charts. Make sure that you're aware of everything that's available to you on the site. So join me for Stock Charts In Focus every Friday on Stock Charts TV, also up on our YouTube channel and the on-demand platform after the show airs live on Fridays at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time on Stock Charts TV. And by the way, we've got an exciting special coming up today, actually. Uh, Monday, March 22nd, we've got an exciting bracket challenge with Greg Schnell, Tom Boley, David Keller, and myself. We are going head-to-head -head in a stock pick and showdown on Stock Charts TV, so look for that. We're calling it Chart Madness. It's going to be a lot of fun, and you can actually download the bracket that we're going to be using ahead of time. Uh, so visit stockcharts.com slash chart madness, all one word, for more info on that. Uh, but join us today, 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Stock Charts TV, or look for the recording after the live show airs. I want to thank you so much for joining me on today's edition of Your Daily Five. I will be back very soon, and until then, 
Chart on, my friends. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.